The Source and Program Monitors in Premiere Pro let you view video clips and edit video sequences. Let's look more in detail about the Source Monitor. Specifically, the Source Monitor allows you to play back individual clips. Using the Source Monitor, you'll prepare clips that you want to add to a sequence or project in Premiere. Normally, we will be setting in and out points to specify the duration of the clip and indicate what section of the clip that we want to use. Let's dive a little more deeply in regards to what we can do in the Source Monitor. I already have some media in my project panel, so I'll go ahead and add a media clip to the Source Monitor. The easiest way to add media is to simply select it and drag it to the Source pane. This will add the media into the Source pane. You can also add media to the source pane by simply double clicking on it. And if you know that you're going to be working with a lot of clips, you can actually preload them into the source monitor. All you need to do is select all of the clips and then you'll just drag them to this open space to the right or the left of any existing media. Now that we've added the media, if we want to switch between the clips, we can use this hamburger menu and we can swap between the various clips that we have already loaded into our source monitor. This little blue bar in the source monitor is the playback head. And as we move throughout the clip, you'll see that the playback head is going to correspond with where we are in that particular clip. You'll also notice that there's numbers on the left and on the right. The numbers on the right indicate the total duration of the clip. This clip is currently 41 seconds and 29 frames. The time code on the left is going to be broken into hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. This number is going to show you where you are relative to all the media that the camera originally recorded. As you scrub through the clip, you'll see that these numbers are going to change depending on where exactly you are within the clip. If you want to play the clip, you'll simply click the play button at the bottom of the source pane. The keyboard shortcut to do this is to hit your spacebar, and spacebar acts like a toggle. So when you click the spacebar once, the video is going to play. When you click the spacebar again, the video will pause or stop playing. In addition, you can rewind or advance frame by frame by clicking these little buttons to the left and the right of the playback button. It might be easier to just use the keyboard shortcuts. You can use your left and right arrow keys to advance or rewind one frame at a time. Right arrow key advances, left arrow key rewinds. There are some other important keyboard shortcuts that will be extremely useful to you when you're editing video. Those are your J, K, and L keys. These keys are the shuttling commands. If you click J, it's going to go ahead and play your video backwards. K will stop or pause the video. And if you click the L key, it's going to play the video forwards. As you're trying to dial in the exact location of where you want to set an in or out point, these keyboard shortcuts are going to be extremely useful. If you want to speed up the playback, you can hit the L or the J key multiple times. So if I click the L key once, it's going to play in real time. If I click it twice, it speeds up and plays in double time. The same thing happens with the J key. You can also play your video in slow motion. If you hold down the K key and then add the J or the L key, your video is going to play in slow motion. Playing in slow motion can be really useful for honing in on very specific sections of your video that you want to edit. One of the things that you'll constantly be doing in Premiere is you're going to be setting in and out points. In and out points designate the section of the shot that you want to edit. Inside the source window, these are how you can set your in and out points. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts of I for in and O for out. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get to a particular location in your video where you're going to want to set an endpoint. So let's do that now. I'm going to go ahead and hold down my K key and add the L key so that I can advance in slow motion so I can find the exact shot that I want for the beginning of the video. 
Once I get there, I'm going to click the Mark In button. As you can see, part of the clip becomes highlighted. We've also reduced the overall duration of the clip. When you set in and out points, you're simply marking an area within the video clip that you want to use in your project. You're not actually making any edits to the original video clips. That's one of the great things about using Premiere. Everything you do here is non-destructive. Because Premiere is not embedding the clips, it's just pointing to them, we're using a reference of those clips, and any edits or changes that we make will not affect the original source material. I'll go ahead and I'll click L so I can set the out point for this clip. Once I've found the location for my out point, I'm going to click the keyboard shortcut of O to set the out point. Once again, you'll notice that the total duration of the clip has now changed. That's because I'm designating this section of the clip as something that I want to use within my project. If you make a mistake and the in and out points are not in the appropriate location, it's not a big deal at all. All you have to do is advance or rewind to the section where you want to set a new in or out point, and then you can simply reset the out point by clicking O, or in the case of in point, by using I. It is possible to actually grab the in and out points and drag them to a specific location. So if that's easier for you, you could certainly do that as well. Personally, I find using the keyboard shortcuts to be the easiest way to set my in and out points. I also wanted to mention that since we have multiple clips loaded, the in and out points are going to be saved. So you can see I've specified in and out points and in turn making the total duration of this clip 7 seconds and 44 frames. If we go ahead and switch to another clip, and then we work on this clip, so I'll go ahead and hit spacebar to play the clip. When I find an endpoint that I want, I'm going to click I to set the endpoint. And then when I want to find an area that I want to set an out point, I'll just go ahead and click O. You can do this on the fly while your video is playing. The keyboard shortcut to play from an in to an out point is going to be different on the different platforms. On a Mac, it's Option K. On the PC, it's going to be Control plus Shift plus Spacebar. It's nice to be able to just preview the spot where you've set your in and out points so that you can ensure that they're in the perfect location. If we go back to the original video clip, you'll see that the in and out points are still stored with this particular file. Even if you close down Premiere and open it later, the in and out points will be saved with your project. Now that we've set the in and out points, we've marked the shot. This allows us to set ourselves up to perform additional edits and to add just this portion of the clip into our project. We'll look at how we can do that next.